What's going on everybody? Jonathan Rahina here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bell YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to assemble the Tusk motorcycle wheel balancing and truing stand. Now I got this set a couple days ago from some lady on Facebook Marketplace and uh, apparently she buys pallets with her husband that are full of open box items that they can't sell in stores. But uh, I got this thing for a super good deal. I opened it up while I was there to make sure all the contents of the uh, assembly was there and it's all there. The only thing that was missing was the set of instructions to assemble it. So I went on Google and found that Rocky Mountain ATVMC actually has a full printout of uh, how to assemble this thing. But uh, if you guys are like me, I like to go to YouTube first usually and just watch a video on something and uh, learn how to assemble it there. So I'll make sure I link these instructions on the uh, description below so you guys can go ahead and print that out if you guys want to go by that. But uh, if not, uh, this thing is super easy to assemble apparently. All you need is a three millimeter uh, Allen key, a 12 millimeter wrench, and a Phillips head screwdriver. So. Without further ado, let's get today's video started. Alrighty, first order of business, let's go ahead and get this box opened up, pull all the parts out and see exactly what we're working with. Alrighty, we got all the parts out of the box, ready to go and uh, get this assembly started. Now, one thing I did notice after pulling it all out, I think I know why this thing was on that open box pallet and that's because the leveler has one of the uh, corners chipped off of it and um, it's not gonna be able to uh, get bolted down on all three corners, but that's okay. We still have two corners and this right here is just to be, um, just to help you level out the base of the uh, assembly. So uh, make sure, cause it does say in those instructions right there that you don't over tighten it. Maybe that's what happened. It was over tightened at some point and it was returned to a store. I don't know, but either way though, the, uh, the little corner got chipped off on the leveler. Not a big deal. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, get this thing assembled, and we're gonna start off by uh, getting the base of the stand assembled. All right, so first thing we're gonna do in this installation, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the feet into the base of it. So let's go ahead and get this stuff out of the way, flip this on over, and let's get these uh, feet installed. So these are gonna be installed hand tight. Nothing, uh, no tools necessary for this part right here. Alrighty, now that we got the feet installed, time to go ahead and get that leveler installed. Now one thing that Rocky Mountain ATV uh, MC did mention in their installation instructions was to not over tighten this thing. So we're going to make sure that we don't over tighten it. I'm assuming it's probably because that plastic is really fragile as we've seen and uh, probably will break if uh, we do over tighten it. So let's make sure we take our time with it and install it without over tightening it. So this is where we're going to use our screwdriver and that is to tighten this thing down right here. Like I said before, do not over tighten these screws because you probably will break the plastic on the edges and we don't want to do that. So that's nice and secure now. So that's how it should look. Leveler installed and actually we're probably not going to even have to uh, adjust these little stands right here because that bubble is dead center. So that's good to go. Alrighty, now that we have our base completely assembled, it's time to go ahead and install our uprights. The side that has the dial indicator built into it is gonna be the side that's installed on the left, and the other one is gonna be installed on the right. Now make sure that you have your bearings facing inward like so, and let's go ahead and get these bolted down. Alrighty, now that we have these all hand tight, we can go ahead and lock them in place with our 12 millimeter wrench that we were talking about earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another one so I can go ahead and just hold the bottom side in place and just lock them in on top. Perfect. Now, we have the assembly pretty much all together. Last thing that we gotta do is go ahead and install our dial indicator right here. And this will just be held in place finger tight right now because uh, we're gonna be able to use this to adjust in the future. Uh, no need to actually fully lock that down right now. Alrighty, so now that our stand is completely assembled and ready to go, we can assemble the last part, which is gonna be the balance shaft. And uh, we're just gonna mock these parts up on here because obviously we're not gonna be doing a balance job today. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and throw one cone on one side, 
throw the other cone on the other side, beveled sides pointing inward because those are gonna be the parts that hold your wheel in place. Then we're gonna go ahead, take our locking collars, throw one on each end as well, sit that right on top. And now our Tusk wheel balancing and truing stand is ready to go. And just like that, our new Tusk wheel balancing and truing stand is completely assembled and ready to go. Now guys, the reason why I actually bought this thing is because I have a set of new spokes and tires on the way for my son's Suzuki JR50. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use that machine for this bike, and then also in the future when I need to respoke and new tires for my bike, I'll show you guys how to do it on a full size rim as well. So if you guys are looking forward to that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can teach you guys how to use that machine. And if you guys haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. But until the next time guys, I'll see you then. Peace.